200,000 years, us humans have been around. There have been many discoveries and inventions that have helped humans advance into a better age. These new discoveries and advancements are often used for both good and bad causes. Take gunpowder, for example. It was discovered by an ancient Chinese alchemist during the Tang Dynasty and was meant to be used as a way to achieve immortality. This discovery was later developed and used to kill massive amounts of people. But hey, it's also used to lift people's spirits in times of celebration, right? Fireworks, Happy New Year, Chinese New Year. Agent Orange was made as a herbicide and a fertilizer to speed the growth of soybeans. However, during the Vietnam War, it was used for herbicidical warfare, which caused over 400,000 deaths and many long-lasting health problems. Another great example is when German chemist Fritz Haber discovered how to fix nitrogen particles in the air. This discovery was used to create bombs and kill many people during World War I. On the other hand, this discovery was also used to create fertilizers, which revolutionized agriculture. These examples illustrate how human inventions and discoveries can either be used for good or bad, and us as humans have the power to control that. The Manhattan Project was a great example of this. In 1932, a Hungarian physicist by the name of Leo Szilard theorized that it was possible to create energy by splitting a nucleus of a radioactive atom into two. He believed the key was the then newly discovered neutron. He believed that if the neutron could be used to be fired at, straight at a nucleus and that could split the nucleus into two and that could turn into a chain reaction this could be used to create immense amount of energy that could be used to create a destructive bomb. Siller later patented this theory because if he held the patent then nobody else could make the bomb which means nobody else could cause destruction. Later in 1936 when the Nazis came to power in Germany Siller turned his patent over to the British government so they could be classified under British secrecy laws. This would help keep it out of the Nazis a few years later, on the 17th of December 1938, two German chemists by the name of Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann discovered nuclear fission and proved that Stiller's theory was actually correct and that this could be used to create massive amounts of energy. In nuclear fission, a nucleon is fired at an unstable nucleus splitting it into two separate nuclei and releasing three neutrons and some binding energy from the strongest fundamental force, the strong force. The released neutrons hits the nucleus of other unstable nuclei, causing a chain reaction that grows exponentially and therefore releases massive amounts of energy. They discovered that nuclear fission was capable of generating massive amounts of heat and energy in a time as short as the trillionth of a second. This is also known as a picosecond. This new way to create energy had the potential to create a bomb like never seen before. An atomic bomb. Regardless of this being under British secrecy laws, fear spread out throughout the scientific community that the Nazis could be using this to create a bomb for themselves. Specifically, Albert Einstein, a Jewish German who escaped Nazi Germany, Enrico Fermi, a physicist who had recently escaped fascist Italy, and Hungarian-born Leo Szilard. In 1939, Leo Szilard and another physicist, Eugene Wigner, drafted a letter to be sent to Franklin D. Roosevelt to warn the government about extremely powerful bombs of a new type that could be constructed. This is what gave rise to the Manhattan Project. The project was led by the United States and supported by the United Kingdom and Canada. Roughly two billion dollars and about 26.8 current US dollars were spent on the Manhattan Project in addition to hiring 130,000 people and having some of the smartest scientists the world had working on the Manhattan Project.
On July 16, 1945, an explosion that could be seen from over 100 miles away was seen in Los Alamos, New Mexico. This explosion was caused by the first ever nuclear weapon to be detonated, codenamed Gadget. The explosion of Gadget was the first and only test of a nuclear weapon during the Manhattan Project. Another effect of the Manhattan Project was on August 6, 1945. A B-29 named Earl Gay dropped an atomic bomb named Little Boy on Hiroshima. Hiroshima was Japan's seventh largest city, and in minutes, half the city vanished. According to estimates, 60,000 to 70,000 people died that day. <laughs> Due to the bomb's radiation, thousands of people had radiation poisoning for many generations. Of 90,000 buildings in Hiroshima, over 60,000 buildings were destroyed. Here's a photo of Hiroshima before and after the nuclear bomb. Three days later, on August 9th, 1945, the U.S. dropped another nuclear bomb on the city of Nagasaki. This time it was a different bomb, called the Fat Man. The total death toll of these two bombs counted up to 225,000 people. To sum it all up, after nuclear fission was discovered and after it was determined and proved that it could be used to create a bomb, the scientific community and the world in general was worried the Nazis might be using this technology to create a bomb. This is what gave life to the Manhattan Project. And this is how the first nuclear bombs were developed. What, you want to see bloopers? Sure. There have been many discoveries made, both good and bad. Shenanigans. Another great example is when the gem can- no. That was a great explanation. Recording? Yeah, I'm recording. Okay. 